In this video you will learn what is Angular Signal Input and how to use it inside Angular 17. So not so long ago inside version 17.1 we got a cool new feature which is called Angular Signal Input. As you can see here inside core it exposes the new input API for the signal based inputs. Let's have a look on the code. Here I prepared for us a pagination component. This is just a standalone component with some markup inside our template and here are several inputs that we have. It's a current page, total and limit. Then inside ngOnInit we are calculating pages array and then we render this information on the screen. What problems do inputs have inside Angular? First of all, we typically have this problem. When we don't provide a default value, we are getting an error. Property current page has no initializer and is not definitely assigned in the constructor. It is really a nasty error because you can only fix it by providing a default value. This is exactly what we did here. But sometimes you don't really want to provide a default value inside your component. You really may want to say, okay, I really need inside to provide a current page, total and limit. This is why here you might want to remove a default value. And in order to fix that, inside Angular we got required property and we can set it to true. Actually, this will tell TypeScript to check this input and it will throw an error if we try and remove here a current page. We are getting an error, required input current page must be specified. But still, as you can see, this error with no initializer is there and in order to fix that, you might want to use an exclamation mark to tell TypeScript that this value is for sure there. It is obviously not true, but because of this required, we're kind of on the safe side. But obviously this is not the best possible code, and now we're getting something better instead. Additionally to that, we don't really have a good way to trigger some changes when our input changes. Yes, if our input changes, our template will be re-rendered. Angular does it for us, but what can we do if we want to prepare some variable when something changes? For example, as you can see here, I have ngOn in it, inside which we are using total and limit in order to calculate pages. We are doing this only on initialize, so we are not expecting that these values are changed. If they are, then we must write here ng on changes. And you know the drill, you must get here your simple changes and then check what you are getting inside your changes and apply this logic instead. This is not really comfortable because this is not a declarative way. So basically two most important problems that we had is this initializer problems and some changes callbacks inside our component. And both these problems are brilliantly solved with signals. You already know signals, we are creating a signal, we are rendering it inside template and it works just fine. But previously we could not use signals as our inputs, we can do that now. This is why here we can comment out all these inputs, we don't need them. And we can simply create here multiple local properties without need to create an input. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's jump back into the video. So here I can say that we want to create a current page and it equals an input. And as you can see, we're getting an input from Angular Core and we can even say dot required. And inside we are providing a data type, in our case it is a number, and we are calling it with round brackets. So what it does, this creates for us an input. And this input, as you can see, it's an input signal of number, which means we are getting directly a signal inside our component and not just some local property. Additionally to that, our input can be just an input, which is optional by default, or with dot required, it can be required, which means it is also much better typed for the TypeScript. Now let's write exactly the same with other variables. So we have here total, which is an input, and it must also be required, and it is of type number. And the last one here is our limit, which is also an input, it is required, and it is of type number. 
Now we can remove these inputs, we don't need them anymore. Most importantly, these are just local properties, they are not really separated like inputs. But most importantly, this is a readable input signal, we can't update it. But now we must tune our component a little bit, so this total must be called, because this is a signal, the same with this limit, and now here inside our template we can also check current page and compare it with the page. So as you can see changing inputs to signal inputs is extremely easy, but we can do even better. As I already told you, this logic inside NGNinit is not the best approach, why that? First of all, this logic will happen only on initialize, but it won't happen when inputs are changed. We can fix that now by creating a signal pages. What does it mean? Here inside pages we can assign a computed signal, which actually means here we have a function and this function must return some value. Now I want to copy this code inside our pages and I can remove and in it, we don't need that. Now instead of these pages we can simply return here this range pages count and that's it which actually means our pages is the signal of number array, this is exactly what we wanted. But most importantly now it is declarative, it is based on our inputs, it will be directly changed every single time when our input changes and we don't need any code like ng on init or ng on changes at all. Now the only thing that we need to do is remove here implements on init and update our pages to the signal, so we need to add here round brackets. As you can see the code with angular signal inputs is really clean and much easier to support. And the validation is still there, we are still getting required inputs current page, limit must be specified. And if you for some reason still don't know other features of Angular 17, like for example control flow or defer, make sure to check them in this video also.